Uh, hello everybody, uh, welcome back. Looks like I got some uh, light on my nose and my eyes. Hope that's okay for you. Uh, we're here for a top 10 video of Commander Legends cards for, you guessed it, Commanders. So my top 10, uh, not necessarily the strongest cards uh, in the EDH format, but I think that these cards are going to make an impact uh, somewhat. Mm, yeah, so I'm coming from CEDH, so that's why I have these cards ranked the way they do. And um, yeah, also cards that I like might make it, might squeeze their way into the top 10. Not necessarily saying that they're going to see all the CEDH play in the world, because I certainly think uh, about six of these cards will not. Just kidding. Um, about three of them I don't think will see much CEDH play. But, this is a top 10 video. Gotta make a video with 10 cards. Alright, cool. Uh, let's start off with number 10. Wrong Turn. This is one of the cards I don't think is going to be a CDH card. But, I think it's a really cool card with a lot of various applications. Um, I think that blue instant speed decks are just getting stronger and stronger based upon all the good instants and good flash creatures that they're printing. Um, and this card can wreck your opponent, obviously giving your commander, sorry, giving your opponent's win con, which is usually the commander, to one of your opponents, is pretty good. Um, yeah, and I like the art, and I just like the concept. It's a really cool card. It's a really cool card. Wrong turn. Coming in at number 10. Alright, number 9. We're gonna go with Tevish Sat. Yeah, we spoiled him. No, we didn't. Um, but we made a video about him. Uh, if you want to watch that video, click the link here. Just kidding. I'm not going to have a link to the previous video. If you want to watch it, please watch my videos and uh, go back and listen to what I say about Tevish Sat. I like him. I don't think he's going to be competitive by any means. Obviously, he's a five mana planeswalker that doesn't really win you the game or get you close to winning. Uh, but I think it is a really cool card, being able to create tokens to protect himself, and then sacking things, drawing an excess amount of cards. He's really good. Tevish Sot. <clears throat> um, by the way, um, I really want to know your guys' opinion, so please comment on my videos. Um, I really want to know if you think wrong turn is a wrong turn. I want to know if you think Tevish Sot is garbage. Let me know if you think my ideas are wrong or if you have ideas of your own. Let me know what cards you're excited for the set, for in this set. I'm really excited to hear what you have to say. So please express your opinions. Thank you very much. All right, number eight, we got Jessica. Um, Jessica is a partner planeswalker with a busted minus X ability. Seeing as if you have infinite mana, um, you just win. Because you cast Jessica from your command zone, you minus X her, making that, you know, she dies, and you just dome everybody in the face. Um, so you cast Jessica an infinite amount of times and activate her minus X an infinite amount of times and kill all of your opponents. Yeah, she's, uh, she's pretty sweet. Um, in my top 10 video, you're going to be seeing a lot of mono red cards. I feel like mono red got a lot of love in this set. Um, obviously, Jessica, if she's your partner, you're probably gonna wanna partner her with something like Thrasios or Timna, which are already busted, and add two very viable colors to uh, Jessica. I think there's lots of mono-red partners in this set that could be um, partnered with either Thrasios and Timna and be an amazing deck, and we're gonna talk about that. So I think Jessica goes great with Thrasios especially, but it would be fun to see what she could do with Timna by her side as well. All right, great. Yeah, so that's uh, that's Jessica. She's pretty strong. Uh, great, so that's number eight. Number seven, speaking of mono-red legendary creatures, this is Rograk. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but I'm assuming it's some sort of rolled R with the, like, German thing going on, Rograk, or something like that. Anyway, um, a zero mana commander 
out of your command zone is pretty busted with things like Cloudstone Curio, Dockside Extortionist. Um, yeah, just being able to cast your commander from the command zone with zero mana and then bouncing it back to your hand with Cloudstone Curio and casting it as a zero mana spell, something that ramps you like Dockside is pretty busted with this. Uh, I think Rograk's perfect pair is probably, again, Thrasios. Um, just having that infinite mana sink, uh, being able to draw your whole deck and play... Um, what's it called? The card that everybody wins with. Um, Merfolk. Jesus Christ. It's the Merfolk that ETBs and wins you the game. Because you don't have any cards left. Because you drew them all with Thrasios. Great. Uh, yeah, so Rograk is another great legendary red card. Uh, number six, more red cards. It's a uh, wheel of misfortune, and yeah, it's uh, a bit misfortunate that this is not wheel of fortune. But hey, wheel of misfortune isn't that bad, uh, considering most of your opponents in situations where someone wheels, they want to wheel. They're probably gonna name a number more than zero. Um, there might be really, really corner cases where each of your opponents, let's say you play this card, and each of your opponents just kind of wants to screw you. Um, they'll just say zero, in which case none of your opponents are going to take any damage, and none of your opponents are going to wheel. Maybe you get to wheel, maybe you get to discard your hand and draw seven cards. Uh, but you're going to take the damage, which is interesting. So this card is just very interesting. There's a lot of different scenarios where this card could play out completely different from the last. Um, this is a really interesting card, and I'm excited to see where this goes. I think in Grixis decks built around uh, one of the cards that we're about to talk about, we will talk about it eventually in this video, um, decks built around wheels... They're probably going to put Wheel of Misfortune in, but that being said, it's not as surefire as a Wheel of Fortune or a Dark Deal or a Windfall. Um, you yeah. know, it's a really interesting card, but I can see your opponents kind of like talking together when you play this and just being like, let's all say zero. Let's say your opponents have combo parts in their hand and they don't want to discard them. They're going to say zero, in which case they won't have to discard their hands, even if all of them say zero, which is a drawback. Yeah, um, hmm. it's a weird card. I'm interested to see where this goes, and that's why it's number six on our list. Number five, we have Jessica's Will, which is an absolute boon, an absolute powerhouse in Goto. Um, any mono red list is just going to love this. It's probably going to be three mana sorcery ramp you four mana. Uh, considering you're probably going to have an opponent with seven or more cards in their hand. And then the um, card draw, it's not card draw, but the exile ability uh, is just icing on the cake. And if you're playing something like Rograk, you're always going to be able to get the three cards and ramp and it's fantastic i really think jessica's will is going to see a lot of play not only in mono red decks but decks with less constringent mana requirements i think it's a really good card and i'm excited to see what it does jessica's will to go along with number eight jessica so jessica's getting a lot of love in this set all right, uh, number four, number four, number four, uh, the Battle Bond Lands. I don't know what else to call them because I'm familiar with the other five that came out in Battle Bond, which is one of my favorite sets. Had a really good time with that set. Uh, and then this set comes out with the other five, and they're great. Um, yeah, I think they're great in most decks that run two or more colors. Uh, personally, I don't have all the money in the world so I don't have every single fetch land for my five color decks. So yeah, I run these in my five color decks 
I don't have dual lands. Uh, plus, that gets around Opposition Agent, one of the cards that is going to see a lot of play from now on. Um, yeah, these are just great lands. They're perfectly fine. They're basically shock lands that you can't search for, but you don't take two when they come in untapped. They're great. Nothing wrong with them at all. Just good cards. All right, number three. Oh my god, Jewel Lotus. Uh, I don't really want to talk about this that much because I'm sure you guys already know about it. But Jewel Lotus is going to be really, yeah, it's going to be really annoying if your opponent just wins on turn one or two because they had Jewel Lotus in their opening hand. There uh, might be a lot of games in CADH where you don't even see a turn because of Jewel Lotus. It's that oppressive, it's that powerful, it's that pushed. That being said, if you don't draw it in your opening hand, in most decks, it's complete garbage. Uh, it's good in partner decks, it's good in decks that run less colors than four or five, um, with exceptions being things like Sisse, Golos, Kenrith, um... You know, uh, five color cards that have their um, color identity because of their activated abilities rather than their uh, casting cost. Uh, I know I will be playing Jeweled Lotus in my Golos deck because popping out a turn one or turn two Golos, being able to search up Guy's Cradle, that's awesome. Or if I need colors, I can search up whatever colors I may need. Yeah, Jeweled Lotus is it's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm done talking about it. It's good. I'm not that salty that they printed it. I'm happy they're printing CEDH cards. It shows that they care about the format. Maybe not directly. Maybe that's not the reason they're printing Jeweled Lotus. But yeah, it's fun to see new cards and to see how they're going to shake up the format. So I'm happy about it. All right, number two. You might be surprised. It's not the uh, black one. Actually, it is. What am I talking about? Number two is not the blue one. It's the black one. It's Opposition Agent. Um, yeah, this card is freaking incredible. Almost, yeah. Very similar to Aven Mind Sensor, which is one of my favorite cards in this format. Um, but Opposition Agent is just another card that says your opponents can't search their libraries and at three minute instant speed with the ability to search whatever it is and to get one of your opponents that one time you play it, ooh, it's going to be sweet. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see, you know, because, like, if people on turn one, turn two, or turn three have their open mana, it'll be really interesting to see if people play their opposition agent in response to your opponents playing a, or cracking a fetch land. Because, obviously, that's not the most optimal play with this. I guess it's really going to depend upon, you know, uh, whether, you know, it's going to depend upon turn order, um, because you're probably going to want to spend that mana and use your mana efficiently, so if it's, let's say, the person whose turn it is before your turn and they crack a fetch, if you have three mana up for your opposition agent and you want to spend that mana and you don't have any other resource to spend it on, you're probably going to take the fetch, but I suggest with your opposition agent being patient, seeing if you if you can get somebody's gamble or if you can get somebody's demonic tutor, Eladomri's call, what have you, something a bit more impactful than a fetch land. Obviously, screwing your opponent out of one fetch land is really nice, and getting that land yourself is really sweet. But, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Be patient with the agent. Patient agent. That's what they should have called the card. Patient agent. Now, because uh, I'm sure there's going to be tons of people who aren't patient with their agent. They're just going to be opposing. Uh, yeah. All right. Number one, Hull Breacher. Broken ass card. As if Notion Thief wasn't ridiculous enough in this format. Let's take away one of the mana. Let's have it be... Uh, monocolored card, so it goes into a bunch of different lists. Let's have it ramp us 21 cards if somebody pops 
a Wheel of Fortune. Let's have it ramp us. You know, it, it depends on how many cards they have in their hand, but yeah, Wheel of Fortune, Windfall, Dark Deal, Hull Breacher is disgusting. I think it goes in pretty much every single blue deck because card draw is one of the most efficient ways to win in Commander. Hull Breacher is gross. It's especially gross in decks playing three or more colors, being able to mana fix with those treasure tokens. Um, the reason I have Hull Breacher above Opposition Agent is because I think Hull Breacher's ability is much more... Um, you can take advantage of Hull Breacher's ability much more than you can take advantage of Opposition Agent. Opposition Agent, once it's on the battlefield, your opponents aren't going to search their libraries at all, because why would they? But Hull Breacher, there's many, many ways in Magic to force your opponents to draw cards. That's why I think Hull Breacher is far more abusable than Opposition at... Sorry, Opposition Agent, and that's why it's number one on my list. Yeah, alright. Thanks for listening, everybody. That was my top ten Commander Legends cards. Um, I know I'm really excited for this set. I did a pre-release this past weekend. Uh, lucky me, I live in Japan. I'm able to do that kind of stuff. I really hope my friends back in America are able to do that soon. In the meantime, stay safe. And uh, I hope you are able to enjoy this set as much as I'm going to because it's broken. All right. Once again, comment on the video. I want to hear your guys' opinions. What cards are you most excited for in this set? And uh, yeah, see you later. Thank you.